If I start by asking uh, the condition under which your brother currently is in and, and how he's doing. Um, well, how he's doing, his, his health is in a critical state. Uh, he has been on a uh, partial hunger strike since April and he has escalated to a full hunger strike uh, a week ago. And today, he had five hours ago, he had his last uh, glass of water. Um, so we are talking about a matter of days if we are lucky. Um, either he, you know, either he's released uh, in safety here with his family and gets the proper medical care he needs or, or he dies in prison. Um, he has been in prison for the past nine years, uh, basically since Abdel Fattah Sisi came to power and he has been exposed to all sorts of human rights violations you can imagine. He was tortured, uh, he has been deprived from the sun, Ali has long seen the, seen the sun for three years now. Um, he has been deprived from books for years. Um, every s simple thing you can think of that is supposedly his right and, 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 and easily provided is um, he is prevented from in Egyptian prisons as a punishment and to set an example uh, and make an example of him for anyone who dares to speak their own mind or speak about the uh, human rights atrocities committed by the Tehsis regime in prison and out of it. Mona, an incredibly difficult time for you and your family. How do you feel about the letter you have received from the Prime Minister? So... The letter was reassuring in the sense that we feel that finally we got the recognition uh, we've been waiting for for Alex, a critical case uh, from a, 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 a UK prime minister. We are very worried, though, that it might be a bit too late, um, but we will we can't do anything but hold on to the flimsy hope there is. Uh, Rishi Sunak is now uh, heading to COP27. Uh, he will be in the same land where my, where my brother is detained, where my brother has been subjected to all forms of um, torture and human rights abuses. Um, Ale is in a dangerous state, and so it really is up to Rishi Sunak to come back with Ale alive. Otherwise, Ale will not make it out of uh, Abdel Fattah Sisi's prisons, except to be buried. In this letter, the Prime Minister described your brother's plight as a priority for the British government. Did you know the letter was coming? We did not know the letter was coming. It was honestly a surprise, uh, but it was kind of. It was also in addition to finally getting through to the Foreign Secretary, James Cleverly has talk, spoken to me and my sister a week ago. So all of this gives us the indication that Ali is really a top priority. We just hope that this is actually um, coupled with a concrete action because honestly, we've been, um, we've been trying for a whole year with the UK government. They have not been allowed consular access to Ali in prison, despite having very solid relationships with Egypt. Uh, up until now, um, the official spokesperson of the UK government in Arabic and in the in the Middle East and Africa, North Africa, is promoting tourism videos on her account, on social media accounts for Egypt. So while we are getting this assurance in writing from Rishi Sunak, we are also getting a lot of uh, other mixed messages that says things are usual, business is as usual with Egypt, despite them holding uh, a British citizen in arbitrary detention and practically pushing to, pushing him to his death. So I honestly hope and pray that they will be um, up to the task, that they will um, have a concrete action, plan of action that saves Ali rather than, and it has to be done within days or else um, we will lose. Mona, on that point of mixed messages, as you put it, how much confidence do you have in, in there being real change and the difference that this letter and Rishi Sunak's pledge of this being a priority will make? I don't, I sadly don't have a lot of confidence, um, mostly because I feel this is a bit too late and I feel that as if all parties waited till Ali is actually on the verge of dying to start acting and taking the matter seriously. But again, I don't have the luxury of not um, holding on to any, any small um, ray of light. Um, so the only thing we can do right now is push as much as possible, is hope that the UK government is up to it, and hope not just that the UK government, but all world leaders attending COP27 will not be too scared or at least reluctant to stand up against um, the atrocities committed by Abdel Fattah Sisi will take this opportunity to actually help not just Ali, but thousands of political prisoners who have been languishing in Egyptian prisons uh, with no hope of surviving this brutal regime that is ruling Egypt. Can I ask how you feel uh, about 
speaking out, whether there are concerns for your family that this might make your brother's case actually more complicated, more difficult by you and your sister both speaking out? So as we speak right now, my, my sister is actually heading to the airport to, to travel to Egypt and attend COP27. And on top of everything, I'm also worried that she'd be um, uh, harassed or uh, arrested in, in the airport. And it would be a new thing. She has been arrested three times before, uh, all the time because she was asking for the freedom of valet. So yes, I do think it, it is possible to be um, l living with Abdel Fattah Sisi in power in Egypt without having to fear um, the consequences of speaking up. But honestly, Ale is dying. It, we are in kind of the last chapter of a nine years ordeal that has been sucking the life out of his body and has been um, freezing our lives and taking hold of our lives. I don't think there's anything I fear worse than my brother dying and then imagining a future without him. Um, so at the moment, um, it's this, you know, um, final push to try and survive as a whole family and regain Ali amongst us, for him, for us, for him, for his son, um, who's just turning 11 years old next month. Uh, it's really, really the top priority, regardless of any other emotions, regardless of fear, regardless of despair, regardless of sadness. Um, it's really, really the top thing we can focus right now on saving Ali, having him with us. I, mean, I can hear in your voice and, and understandably, this is a really difficult topic, but I just want to pick up on um, one point made there. Is there a sense for you and your family that the inevitable now that your brother has stopped taking water will happen in just a matter of days unless action is taken? Yes, I actually think, well, we do believe and it has been kind of made clear that the intention of the Egyptian regime is to keep Ali in prison until he dies. Um, I think Ali just decided to take matters on to his own hands and create a different timeline for their intention and make his the last battle, you know, his last battle, rather than ha have them force this kind of nightmarish fate on him. Um, I do believe that this regime is capable of far more than this. They are capable of, they want to keep Ali until he dies. They want the whole world to watch. Um, this is their way of sending messages to all of Egyptians and to the whole world. Um, so I kind of feel like we are trying with the lost time and I'm terrified Ali will die. But I don't think there's anything in our hands except doing what we are doing now, speaking up about it. Um, making sure his story reaches everyone and um, reminding the governments um, essentially of their responsibility. The Egyptian government and the new UK government are the main um, responsible entities for Alex's safety and for Alex's right and for reuniting our family here in safety.